Iran's bizarre new plan to enforce mandatory hijab laws. So guys, if you heard some fake ass news from the New York Times a few weeks ago that Iran has abolished the morality police or that the mandatory hijab law is gone, that was all literal fake news. And you know, this is their new plan. According to state media reports, Iran is implementing new methods of enforcing the uh, wearing of the hijab in public. Several lawmakers have flouted the move in, in, uh, after the first attempts to enforce the law more strictly gained tremendous backlash after the death in custody of 22-year-old Ma Masa Amini in September of 2022. In December, Hussein Jalali, a hardliner lawmaker and member of the Cultural Committee of Iran's parliament, announced that the regime plans to inform women who do not wear hijab via SMS, aka via text. Quote, after notifying them, we will enter the warning stage. And last, the bank account of the person who was unveiled may be blocked, the lawmaker added. Ali Khan um, Mohammadi, the spokesperson of Iran's headquarters for the enjoining, and right, uh, enjoining of right and forbidding of evil, also announced that hijab laws will be implemented, quote, in a more modern framework. On Sunday, January 1st, an unnamed police officer announced a new stage of surveillance that will enforce wearing the hijab in public. The new surveillance is being, quote, rolled out across the country, the officer claimed. An Iranian news agency reported that five business establishments in Kazvin, a province, a city in northwestern Iran, were shut down as, quote, punishment for serving women who were not wearing hijabs. So I thought that this was really interesting for a couple of reasons. Well, Armin, before I get into that, what is your initial reaction? All right. So. For people to understand why, what's going on behind the scenes, right? Uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran is stuck right now between Iraq and a hard place, okay? Uh, they kind of want to not enforce the hijab anymore. They do want that, okay? But they can't because that would that could be the end of them. They have done... The unfortunate thing for them at building the foundations of their entire regime on um, not just Islamic laws, but specifically, especially this Islamic law, hijab. They have made it to this a symbol of everything they stand for. So getting rid of it will can crumble their foundation, their foundations, one, uh, two, they are the regime is not as if not as afraid as the anti-regime people as it is at uh, from the religion from its very hardcore radical religious supporters okay because they be angry they are really angry Man, they are wondering why the regime is not executing more people and why there are so many women now that have in Iran that have completely taken off their hijab, okay, and why they're not just being arrested in mass, right? We even had we even had a story about the regime beating the crap out of a mullah in the streets because the mullah was asking the police, "Why are you not arresting this non-hijabi woman?" And the police came, and instead of arresting the woman, they beat the, they beat the crap out of the mullah and arrested the mullah and that mullah was hospitalized so that was a bizarre new twist and thing well so, that blew yeah. my mind but that's also according to his account of the story yes we have but, questions <laughs> we have questions like yeah actually we have questions we're not sure we just but we we saw a video of him being arrested so we know he was arrested by the police we also saw a video of him in the in the hospital so we know he was hospitalized right um so but the thing is that religious people were like seeing the, their eyes were red. Like, what is happening? Is this? They were literally asking. I, I I follow a lot of these religious people, okay, on YouTube and everywhere else, like the pro regime religious people, and they were they were running like this must be the end of times. Like everything is upside down now. Um, they, they were like wondering, uh, like they were looking for the signs of end of times. Like, well, like why is our police hit, like arresting the mullah instead of the non hijabi lady? Right. But they are angry with their government and their lack of support for 
the government is more is more likely to take down the government than the anti-regime people okay because the pro-regime religious uh loons they are more of the base and the foundations of the government so if they lose their support this whole thing will crumble down like because the people who are anti-regime they are the regime has already lost them this is the only remaining base that you need they, they need to keep right um so that is why they even if they want to remove the hijab they kind of have to like they they kind of play a game with the people they were like okay we're gonna enforce it like, okay maybe we'll stop enforcing the job and then they see like these religious people go mad and like okay we're gonna enforce it a little bit more we'll see like they're just like looking how they're looking at everyone's reactions trying to figure out what to do but i think like good way of putting I think, it they're just testing the waters to see what they can get away with on both sides exactly but here's what i think the actual strategy is okay not mm. that this is something that we should be content with because the the anti-regime people don't want the hijab to be removed they want the government they just want they want the whole regime to be removed okay so this is not something that they're going to be but i think what the regime's strategy is is to do like a, a sign function like it's like a um, escalate, you know, uh, fluctuating up and down enforcement method where the average mean of it is downwards, right? So if a gentle mm -hmm. downward um, enforcement measure where it's, it, where it goes up and down the mean, right? But because it's going up and down, if you look at it closely, you're not going to notice that the average is downward. You have to actually zoom out to be like, oh my God, it's going down. But because it's going like this around, the, uh, you're not going to notice it. So that's what I think is the strategy is. We Which got is a actually very yeah. interesting, Armin. That's huge. Hmm. Because at the beginning of 2022, it was not like that at all. President Ibrahim Raisi, as soon as he came into office, he came back hardcore. And he was coming back with very stringent enforcement. And we covered a story at the beginning of last year, or maybe midway, about how there were secret documents that were leaked showing all the measures that the government was going to go to to start enforcing hijab more harshly. And some of what was in that document was talked about in these new measures where they're like, I'm uh, notifying people via text and freezing bank accounts. But it, that document was like draconian. It went so much farther. They were going to be using mm -hmm. video surveillance and AI facial recognition to track down people. They were going to start freezing bank accounts of people that merely had people unveiled in their cars, going after any business that doesn't serve people how they want. Like there were... There were so many levels of state interference going on merely over the veil within that document. Like, I can't even list all of it right now. It was so extensive. Um, but then, and then we saw in July, you know, mass demonstrations or civil disobedience, I should say, in uh, opposition to Hijab and Chastity Day that the government was trying to push. And like, Masi Linajad was like pushing that and supporting that. And then we had the Desamasa Amini and everything changed. Like mass adoption of removing the hijab. Like that has never been seen before in the regime's history. And now it's just the new normal. So if you compare like your hypothesis of this like slowly, you know, downward trend, that is the fact that we're now, you know, hypothetically going in that direction is a huge difference to where we were at the beginning of last year it's actually really striking to put it in those terms um <laughs> dia saying this is also stupid to the rest of the world yeah I mean, it's also say. stupid to iranians to be fair though. yeah <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah except but not to this lady let me show let me demonstrate like all of that i'm telling you I'm just going to show there's a lot of like this. Okay. I, I just wanted to find one example that I think perfectly highlights the tension that now exists between uh, the government and religious people. Okay. So, so then I, have you seen this video? Okay. Watch, okay. Watch this. Okay. So this is a not very happy religious lady who is angry for why there's so many just non hijabis walking around freely and she's telling giving his her complaint to this man okay to this official hold on, look. 
she's saying like like why do we have to tolerate all these insults to us right because oh my God. she is basically what she's saying is that we are going and telling women to cover up because it's their response it's their religious she's not a government official right but it is she sees her as she sees it as his religious duty to when she sees a woman without her job to go tell her to cover up and apparently when she does that they respond by swearing at her right oh yeah and, she, <laughs> and she's we, like we've seen the know, videos and and she's like you know how much swearing we have to tolerate like basically saying like go do your job because i'm tired of people swearing at me okay like i as a civilian i'm enforcing your laws because you're not doing your job like go and do your job go and force these women to put a hijab on like how much insults do we have to uh, uh, tolerate mind your business you don't have to worry yeah, about yeah. this okay, hold on let me see what she's saying like of course like you we can of course we can't just stay silent uh um in front of all these non-hijabis like of course it is our duty to basically say something so given that we're forced to say something as a civilian it's going to turn into a fight like you you as a, the government who's not enforcing these hijabi rules is causing all these fights between us and non-hijabi because obviously we can't we cannot tolerate that right like it will start of course it will start a fight <laughs> Okay, so this is amazing. She says, like, I go out with my husband, and when we see a non-hijabi, my husband is like, please don't say something. Please don't. The, her husband is trying to stop her, right? He's like, don't say anything. It's going to start a fight, <laughs> right? <laughs> so her religious husband is telling this religious woman to please stop. Don't say anything. It's going to start a fight, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, the husband says that it starts a fight and I would be forced to beat somebody. This is actually a concern that men have. If you go out and the woman that you're with starts a problem, you're the one whose safety is on the line. 90% of the time. Yeah, no, but the, apparently the husband is like, also has qayrat, right? So mm. apparently if something happens, he's like, oh, sh now, no, I am a man, so I have to now hit somebody. God damn it. I don't want to hit some. It's my religious duty now to hit somebody. I wish I did not have. Look what you have made me do, woman. Now I have to beat this other woman. You've triggered my get at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But she, like, the husband is like, don't start a fight. I would have to beat somebody if you start a fight. Imagine like how insane all of them are. I thought the husband was the <laughs> I thought the husband was like now being reasonable, but the husband is like, oh, you're forced to say something. Well, now I am forced to beat somebody. God damn it. <laughs> she's like, it's it's also she's saying this lady is like, it's not everything is so weird now. Like, why does this is also bizarre because she's saying the whole lack of enforcement of hijab rules is like very bizarre. <laughs> and like, she's saying, why is like the police, like the morality police just standing and watching this like, the, like they're a piece of wood, like basically like they're not doing anything. <laughs> like it is your duty like the religious police is their duty why are they not like doing anything <laughs> oh my god they're not the other woman behind the camera who's recording this you know what she says she's like there's so many things you could do there's so many limitations that you could force on these non-hijabi women she said you could cut their insurance you could like deny their insurance like cut their insurance services you could deny them interest into banks like woman behind the camera is like why there's so many enforcement methods why are you not doing these things to non-hijabi women like, yeah. like they're not doing anything so i mean okay yeah this is like i just want to show what religious people are demanding off of the government right now in iran yeah um d is like he's he isn't even paying attention to her yeah he does look frustrated the other guy looks like yeah this lady you don't know like they i think a lot of religious a lot of officials are like they don't know that we can't do this like have you not seen the country is breaking apart <laughs> so it's like they
they, I think the regime itself is fighting like that has people within it that is fighting now against each other over this. So that's oh, one hundred percent. I mean, we see yeah. it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything else that you wanted to show for this week? Yeah, yes, yes. Um, two things. One is this. Yes, one. okay. I've been waiting to get a translation of this sign because this was going viral. Okay. So um, he's saying, in the honor of the 12 Imam plus two, I think this plus two is Fatima and Muhammad. So it's basically, it's 14. So in the honor of these 14 holy people, I S-H-I-T 14 times on the Quranic verse, chapter 4, ayah 20, verse 24, right? That allows, so Quran uh, 424 is the Quranic verse that allows you to capture women in war and R-A-P-E them as uh, S-E-X slaves. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm trying to tiptoe around YouTube's guidelines, right? So this is a literally a Quranic verse that tells you that you're allowed to R-A-P-E woman as slaves, okay? Um, and this person, this lady holding a sign saying, I S-H-I-T on this specific Quranic verse 14 times that, that with it, you have R-A-P-E for a 14-year-old girl because the, the regime officials have done that recently and they have the justifications for it in the Quran. So this is that sign. So that's one sign I wanted to show you. Well, not even and, recently. It happens like constantly. Yeah. I The next sign is not funny. It's kind of sad, actually. So I, I don't know if you guys saw there was two recent executions two recent executions in Iran of some of the protesters and some of the people who fought back against the regime, right? Like less than two days ago, within the past 48 hours. Yes. So this lady is holding a sign. Um, it looks like it's in the metro, right? Um, and what the sign says, it's what one of the people who were, so Mohammed Mehdi Karami, who was, who was just recently executed, when he in prison, when he was in prison, when he was on the phone talking to his father, he said something to his father on the phone that now it has become viral. And she is holding what he said on the phone to his father. And the sign says, Alo Baba Salam. He says, Alo Baba Hi. Okay. He says, Baba Hokmaro Dadan. He says, Baba Dad. That they they passed out the sentences. Hokmeman Edame. My sentence is execution. Bemamanchizinagu. Don't tell mom. So that last part also, Bemamanchizinagu, has gone viral. Uh, people are writing it all over the walls and everywhere. Bemamanchizinagu. Basically, don't tell mom that I'm being executed. And now he's executed. So, just wanted to show you that. Yeah, can you um, bring up the thing I put in the private chat to show, please? Yes. Because I wanted to actually, like, I don't know, it's important to me to put a face to these things for people. Um, so, the two protesters who were executed in the past 40 hours were Mohammed Mehdi Karami, who you can see here on the right, and Mohammed Hussein, who's on the left. Um, Mohammed Mehdi Karami, he was 19 or 20 years old, and he was a karate champion, and, or excuse me, 22 years old, and he wanted to go to the Olympics. He was a really prolific athlete, and Mohammed Hussein was known as being like a volunteer coach for his local community and doing sports stuff, helping kids. And he was 39 years old. And they were both executed with, you know, a complete sham trials, both experienced severe torture during their imprisonment. I literally can't even give you the details on YouTube. It's so bad it it involved metal rods 
Yeah. It will involve the, their torture involved metal rods. So anything they confess to is completely. You can't rely on any of it. Like no, the whole the, their lawyers. One of their one of the people who was trying to be lawyers when he saw them, he was like the the level of torture was insane. Okay, and also that lawyer was trying to be his lawyers because they didn't allow them lawyers. They had government pick lawyers for them that was actually helping the judge rather than defending the defendants. And the, the lawyer, the, the, there's, a, there's a very brave lawyer right now in Iran constantly trying to attempting to come and defend these people and they deny them. The whole court and the court process is like from the very beginning day of the uh, court proceedings till the execution happening, not even the execution being passed. It takes like 10 days, one week, two weeks. It's insane. Even based on Islamic uh, Republic standards, usually executions takes uh, the course and everything, the appeal and everything takes years. Like you're taking a person's life. You cannot do this. Even if it wasn't torture, even if they didn't torture these people, even if they had access to lawyers, right? You can you even with that condition, you couldn't do these in, in two weeks. You can't do this in two weeks. You're taking a person's life. You have to look at the evidence. So, so you know, even though, even if they, by the way, did the say the things that they say they did, they had every right to. This is they were defending, they were defending the people against um a, a threat. But we don't even know if they did these things because they were tortured and they had no access to lawyers. Their lawyers. I mean, I don't believe a word of it, essentially. Yeah. Why would I? Why would I? Why would I believe anything coming out of the state media? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, really horrific. And um, to that end, actually, let me bring it up really quickly. There are... Um, two other protesters who are now in imminent risk of execution themselves. And so I want to highlight their cases because it's so important to put as big as a spotlight on it that we can all do while we still have a chance. So, um, oh my God, I forgot. Is this going to let me do this? Shoot, my screen settings are messed up on my computer. I'm sorry. Okay, I can't hear this. You want to send it to me? Yeah. So what we're going to bring up is um, two protesters who we believe all reports are indicating that they are next in line to be executed. And we know this because when individuals are transferred to solitary confinement, that is usually a sign that they're about to be up for execution. And so that would be uh, Mohammed uh, Gulbadlu and Mohammed Buranag. Oh, fuck, the game messes me up so much. Armin, how would you pronounce that uh, name. Muhammad Qobadlu and Muhammad Burughani. Thank you. Yeah. Burughani or Burughani? What are those two? Yeah. Uh, so Gani. Gani. both of these individuals, there were a series of people who were facing the death penalty. And then there were some that got um, an appeal, which doesn't mean that they're not at risk of still being executed. It just means that their sentence might be re-examined. And then there were some who had their sentences confirmed. And these two individuals had their sentences confirmed. And now they've been moved to solitary confinement. And there is a huge concern that they are going to be executed next. So what everyone can do is I just put it in the live chat of how you spell their names. If you make posts about this, if you use these hashtags, include their names, this actually does make a difference. This raises awareness. And um a lot of people are going to say, well, oh, you know, people are just going to be executed anyway. Well, isn't it better to fucking say something while you still have a chance instead of doing nothing and just being like, oh, it's not going to happen anyways. And just doing something because maybe it could help. Why not err on that side? Okay. So just, <laughs> sorry, just please make a post and raise awareness about this. And um, yeah, so the, cause the status of these two individuals is, um, very very at risk right now um so those were the main things i wanted to cover in iran for this week um armin and we have some comments and stuff that i would like to dig into so first of all before the show started today we had a new member i 
this is like weird spelling of Xerxes, or I'll just call it Xerxes the fourth became a YouTube member. So thank you, Xerxes. Um, uh, Killa is asking, what percentage do you think of Iran Iranian society is as religious as the regime and supports the tough laws? Based on the data and statistics that come out, um, Armin, I believe it's 20%, around 20%. Do you want me to go dig it? Uh, dig it out, like figure it out? Uh, well, actually, you're right, actually. No. So here's the thing. You have to you, ha you have to separate these things, okay? So religious, um, it's now a minority, okay? And religious and supporting the regime do not mean the same thing, especially now. It used to be closer, but it's less than before, right? So half the half the population um has around half the population close to half the population has actually abandoned religion as a whole which is insane which is insane um a minority of iranians are now muslim based on the recent the recent polls right uh, i think only around something around 30 percent uh could be considered muslim now 30 something right if i remember correctly yeah it was it was 30 something i don't know exactly 30 what but 30 something it was below um, 35 percent. 35 percent. but the support for the re that doesn't mean all these 30 percent support the regime the support for the regime it was below 20 percent. i don't know exactly how much below 20 percent. was it below 20 percent? it was close to 20 percent. it was close it was, to all i remember was that it was around 20 percent. 20 percent but that was all of this was before Mahsa, before Mahsa's murder Mahsa's murder has significantly in a very short amount of time changed many many things i wouldn't be surprised if um, both the support for the regime and people who identify as muslim both of these numbers have been reduced since then i would say dramatically we have had so many reports of people of like really old women who are now uh, who wore the hijab all their life, taking off their hijab and locking their Quran in the cabinet and throwing out the throwing away the key. Like people are reporting things like about their like older mothers and grandmas about things that they, they couldn't even imagine. Right? We have seen so many people who used to be extremely pro-government and religious at the same time coming like into rooms on clubhouse and other social and uh, twitter uh, spaces and everywhere else and talking and we're like i'm i'm taking a look another look at islam and i don't look like what i'm reading what i'm learning about my own religion right so and all of this is happening in the past few months ever since maso this is like a, you know how uh, when isis became a thing a lot of arabs took another look at their religion and they didn't like what they saw so i think for a, lot of in Iranians, a huge wave of apostasy and ushered in a huge wave of atheism among the among arabs and i think this whole massa thing is i mean iran was already in a country where it has mass um people leaving islam and religion in mass as a whole but i think this this whole massa thing just put that thing on steroid and basically now is accelerating that even faster and it's becoming is, so normalized yes it's because so normalized that i i listen to like government officials talking to people and assuming that they're not muslim <laughs> holy crap <laughs> like they're like yeah like <laughs> <laughs> like they're like okay look this hijab is this and this and this i understand that you don't believe in islam however this is the rule of the this is the rule of the law this is the this is the what you have to abide you have to follow the law you're like you're you're talking to people as the iranian people and you're trying to you're trying to explain something to some to them and you're like i understand that you don't believe in islamic law i do i believe that these are not your beliefs I'm like do you understand that you're admitting to the country that you believe that your audience doesn't believe in Islam? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Oh my like God. they know, they know, the government officials know. So there's that. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, 
Numan also gave us a super chat of 100 Thank rupees. Thank you very much, Numan. He is saying F Islam. Good morning. Good morning to you too, dear Numan. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, very quickly, AM is saying, please shed some light on what happened in Hamline University. We actually did cover this last week. So you can find either the clip of us talking about it on this channel, or you can watch the full show in the live section, live little tab on our channel. The clip, I believe, is called um, American Academic Fired for Showing Image of the Prophet Muhammad, something like that. But we, we covered this last week. Um, I got very pissed off. Um, <laughs> and our wonderful moderator, Suha, is reminding people that if you love what you see here and you like our community and supporting our community and all the work that goes into what we do behind the scenes, you can support us financially. And one of the ways that you can do that is on Patreon. She gave us the link and the link Thanks, is also Suha. in the description. And if you become a patron, not only do you get a special perk when Armin does the Q&As with Secular Rarity, but you also get some sexy, juicy uncensored blasphemous art um so make sure to go check it out we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the support that we receive from our community so please consider uh joining on patreon or another way to donate if you have the ability to but if you cannot afford to do not consider donating okay take care of yourself first anyways let's move to the next news Okay, let me unhighlight. All right, Newman, I'm just controlling the temperature. Newman is asking a question. I just want to answer that. Um, uh, Armin has to be kept at a very steady <laughs> climate, okay? He's a temperate little flower, okay? Uh, <laughs> sensitive. Yes. He, All he right. has a threshold of plus or minus five degrees. <laughs> five degrees? Oh, fair, fair, Celsius? I'm I don't used know to how Fahrenheit. I'm... Okay, but I'm plus or America. minus five, that's... Hey. Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> In Celsius, that's a huge difference, you're right. <laughs> that's a five? Oh, my God. You're like, oh, he's so delicate. He needs to be plus or minus five. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> going up five or minus, that's like literally going from, like, dying from heat to freezing. All right. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm an American. <laughs> You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.